Hi everybody, welcome to lecture number 2, Network Models. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about how the network communication works, network communication operations through layer approach using network models. So there are two different models we are going to discuss here. So the first model is a OSI model. The second model is a TCP IP model. So both the models, network models, having layered approach. So if we take OSI model, so there are seven layers available. Whereas in the TCP IP model, so we are having four layers. So about these layers we are going to discuss. So what exactly each and every layer is going to do? What is the functionality of the layers? And what are the protocols associated? The associated protocols for each layer. Okay, so these are the things we are going to cover in this lecture. So the major thing is two models. One is a OSI model and second one is a TCP IP model. Now, layered approach. So layered approach is available everywhere. So we are using, we are using the concept of layered approach in our daily life. Okay, for example, I am writing a letter to my friend. Okay, so two friends, they are going to communicate through the postal mail. So I want to write physically, I want to write a uh, letter to someone else means. So we are going to follow some uh, steps. So what does that means? I am the sender. So I'm going to take a piece of paper. I'm going to write the letter. Then the letter I'm going to just keep it in an envelope and I'm going to put it in the mailbox in the post office. So then the letter will be carried from the mailbox to the post office it is going. Then from the post office to the central office and they are going to deliver it. So they are going to follow some steps. So this is called the layered approach. So we no need to concentrate more here. So there is a layered approach available every uh, everywhere. Okay, in, uh, even in our daily life, we are following that. Now, the same concept we are going to use it in the network also for communication. Now, if you take the layered approach, every layer is going to have three things, the components, components of a layered approach. So what are the three components means? The first component is called the service. The second component is the interface. The third one is a protocol. So every layer is going to do something. Okay, what the layer does, how it not works. So what the layer is going to do, what the layer does. So this is called the service. Then, and every layer is going to communicate. It is going to have the interface with the above and below layers. So every layer, if you take layer X, so X is going to communicate with the above layer and also it is going to communicate with the below layer. So every layer is going to communicate with the above layer and the below layer and with some parameters. The parameters may be changed. So every layer will use a different parameters. They are not going to use the same parameters, all the layers. A different parameters will be used by different layers. Then the next one is a protocol. So every layer is going to have, it is going to use some set of protocols. So if you take layer N, okay, I am taking N. So that is layer N protocols. If you go to the next layer, N plus 1, so that layer will have a set of protocols. N minus 1, N minus 1 layer is going to have a set of protocols. So every layer, it is going to have some set of protocols, which is going to work only in that particular layer. So three different components, service, interface, and protocol. So these are the three different components of a layered approach. Now, network models. So if you take network models, the two popular models are, the first one is a OSI model, and second one is the TCP IP protocol should model. So about these two models, we are going to discuss in this lecture. I'm going for the first one, which is the OSI model, okay, ISO's OSI model. So this model was introduced in late, late, late 1970s, and this is a layered protocol model. Okay, there are layers available here and this model was introduced by ISO, International Organizations for Standardization. So this is the standardized organization. So they introduced this OSI model. So OSI stands for Open System Interconnect. Okay, Open System Interconnect. So this is what exactly the OSI is stands for. So here we are having the layers. There are seven layers available here. Okay, layers perform a specific function. Every layer is going to have a different function. We already studied this in the previous slide. 
okay the three important components of every layer and it is directly it is going to communicate so every layer is going to communicate with the above layers and the below layers now any two computers any two open systems if they want to communicate means with okay from x and y so x is a machine x is a system and y is another system so this x and y wants to communicate means so they need to follow this osi model now so why is saying is not a protocol it's not a protocol but it is a model okay we can say it's a it's a model so it is a model for understanding and designing the network okay the network architecture you can design by following this particular layers and it is very flexible osi model is very flexible osi model is robust and osi model is interoperable okay so these are all the features the features of the osi model if you take osi model there are seven layers available so the first layer layer 1 is a physical layer layer 2 data link layer layer 3 network layer layer 4 transport layer layer 5 session layer layer 6 presentation layer layer 7 application layer so these are the seven layers available now the first that means 7 6 5 4 we can say this is the upper layers okay this is called the upper layers the first four layers we can say as upper layers then the next three we can say it is a lower layers okay so upper layer and lower layers now you can see here every layer is having something called a pdu protocol data unit so every layer is having a protocol data unit so for example layer 7 data data is a pdu protocol data unit for presentation layer data session layer it is data now in the transport layer the data will be converted into segments so the pdu for the transport layer is segments in network layer the segments will be converted into packets then the packet will be converted into frames frames will be converted into bits so the protocol data unit for the first three layers that means application presentation and session it means 7 6 5 so it is the data data is a protocol data unit for layer 4 it is the segments layer 3 packets layer 2 frames and layer 1 bits okay that means the zeros and ones now if you see the two machines device a and device b so they want to send some data and intermediate we have some devices okay so all the seven layers is going to be available here and here also there are seven layers available okay you can see in this diagram so this is the first machine this is the sender that means the device a and this is device b okay so i want to communicate from device a to device b i want to communicate okay now i'm going to start from here from the application layer we are going to start so that means you are going to create create the data here so the data will be created here so from the application layer the data is going to the next layer that means in the presentation layer so from the presentation layer the data is moving to the session layer so from the session layer it is going to the transport layer so what exactly this is means so we have the data in the first three layers okay data 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 this is what we discussed in the previous slide the protocol data unit now in the transport layer with this data the transport layer is going to add something so what exactly it is going to add we will see it later so transport layer is going to add something with this data then it goes to the next layer network layer so in the network layer the network layer is going to add something with this data then it moves to the data link layer so in the data link layer there will be something will be added with this okay with this data so what exactly this is means this process is called the encapsulation process so every layer is adding some data something it is going to add with the data so some something it is going what exactly you will learn it later okay just if you want to uh, make a yes, uh, yes, summarize okay I, i will summarize here what does that means the transport layer will add the port numbers network layer will add the ip address data link layer will add the mac address so like this every layer is going to add something with the data so this process is called the encapsulation process or we can say it is the assembly process okay it is called the assembly process then in the physical layer okay this mean the whole thing will be converted into bits and bits it will be converted into zeros and ones then the zeros and ones it is going to move to the the destination that means in device b we are going to get the bits and all the bits will be 
arranged and it will be given to the data link layer. So in the data link layer, you are going to receive the same thing. This will be received here. Now, the data link layer, it is going to remove the first cover, the first thing, okay, it is going to remove. Then the remaining thing will be given to the network layer. So the network layer is going to remove the next level. So that means whatever you added here, okay, that means whatever you added in the uh, source machine, you are going to do the reverse, we are going to remove it. Okay, you are adding some covers with the data, but here one by one we have to remove it. Okay, we are going to remove one by one, we are going to remove it and finally the data will reach the application layer. So this process is called the disassembly process or we can say it is a decapsulation process. So here every layer will be added, but in the destination machine everything will be removed. Okay, we have to remove one by one and finally the data will be reaching the application layer. So this process is called the decapsulation process. Okay, so encapsulation, decapsulation. So generally encapsulation will, is taking place in the source. Okay, from the source computer, the encapsulation process will be done. In the, the, in the destination, okay, we are going to do the decapsulation process. Okay, so this is how the OSA model is working. Now, this OSA model, it, it's just a guidance. Okay, it's just a guidance for the protocol design or for the network design, okay, you can do. It's not exactly the protocol. It is not the actual protocol. It's just a guidelines. You can follow it. If you want, you can use all the seven layers. I don't want all the seven layers. I want to go for five layers means you can go for. You can merge any two layers. Layer seven and six, I want to merge together. No problem. You can combine it together. So it's, it's just a guidance. This OSA model is going to guide you how you can design your network. Okay, so you can sometimes you can merge some layers. Okay, so two layers I want to merge, three layers I want to merge. Okay, you can do it. You no need to follow exactly all the seven layers. So if you take the TCP IP model, that means the second model we are going to discuss. In the TCP IP model, we now use only the five layers or even four layers we are using. So what exactly we are doing means we are just merging some layers and we just minimize the numbers. Okay, we are we are reducing the numbers or number of layers. So this is also possible. Now why we need layer approach? So what is the use of this layer approach means? So the idea was originally to get a message across the different networks to send the data to the different networks. You need the layer approach. Then by layer, layering, each layer performs a separate function. We already discussed about this. Makes changes and modifications easier. So that means if there is any issue available, suppose in layer number four, I have some issue means you can directly go to layer number four and you can fix that particular problem without disturbing the above layer and below layers. Okay, layer four is having an issue means only directly you go to layer four, you can fix that particular problem. You no need to disturb layer three and layer five. Okay, the above layer and the lower, lower layer, you no need to do any disturb. Okay, you no need to disturb it. So you can directly go to a particular layer and you can fix whatever the problem is there. Okay, this is the advantage of layered approach. Okay, so change of lower layers does not affect the higher layers as long as their interfaces are same. So you can do any changes to the layer, lower layers and it is, does not affect the higher layers. Higher layers deal more with end-to-end -end communication. That means layer seven, six, five, four. So these layers, they are going to deal more with the end-to-end -end communication the remaining layer, that means the lower layers, that means layer one, two, three, they are going to deal with the communications, so data transmission, it is going to communicate with the transmissions. So this is the reason. So why we are going for the layered approach means, so any layer you can replace very easily. You can fix the issues in the layer, okay, in the particular layer very easily. So this is the advantage of layered approach. Now we are going for the layers, each and every layer we are going to discuss now. So layer number one, physical layer. So physical layer, this is layer number one. So here we are having all the medias. So it defines how the signals are sent by a media. So media in lecture number seven, okay, we are, we are going to discuss about the uh, transmission media. So there are different types of medias available, wired, wireless, okay. So there are plenty of things we are going to discuss in lecture number seven. So if you take medias, okay, you can see the satellite communication or fiber optics or coaxial, okay, uh, 
twisted pair cables. So there are different types of medias available. So all the medias is going to be in layer one. And here you are going to transmit the bits over the network. So you can see this diagram from the data link layer you are receiving. Okay, you are receiving something from the data link layer. So whatever you receive, it will be converted into zeros and ones. Okay, it will be converted into bits. So all the bits we are going to send it to the destination. So in the physical layer, so it's going to be converting into bits. Okay, and also we are going to do something called here encoding. Encoding or decoding, that means converting from one form to another form. So you can convert the data, that means the binary data will be converted into binary signals or analog data will be converted into analog signals. So the next lecture, lecture number three, we are going to talk about the signals. So, so here the encoding is going on, encoding decoding process is going on and this is the very popular standards for layer one. Okay, that means the physical layer standards RS-232, RS-449, ISDN and Ethernet. So these are all very popular standards available for layer one. And we can say this layer one, we can say it as a bit pipe also, okay, because here the bits will be transmitted, okay, zeros and ones will be transmitted. So this is about the layer one physical layer. So summary, in physical layer, we are going to have all the uh, transmission media and we are going to convert the, whatever you receive from the data link layer, you are going to convert into bits and bits will be transmitted here, okay. So this is about the layer one. Now. I am going for the layer 2. So layer 2 is the data link layer, okay, data link layer. So in the data link layer, what is a PDU, protocol data unit means it is a frame. So whatever you receive from the previous layer, from the network layer, okay, you are going to add something there, okay, you can see you are going to add a header, okay, we are going to add a header and we are going to send it to the next layer. So this is the source machine, okay, this is the source machine. So in the destination machine, in the destination computer, you can see here, so it's receiving the frame from the lower layer. That means from the physical layer it is receiving. So this is going to be the frame and here it's going to do something, then it will give it to the next layer. So what we understand means in the source machine, you are going to receive it from the network layer and it is going to add something, some header it is going to add. So now it is called the frame. So then it will be given to the physical layer. But if you go for the destination mission, from the physical layer, okay, from the physical layer, you are receiving something, okay, then you are going to remove something. That means, okay, you see the header part will be removed. So this is called encapsulation, this is called decapsulation. So in encapsulation, you are going to add something, something you are going to add. What is that something? Now I am giving the answer, that is the header. So you are going to add a header to your data. So the header will be added here, but here the header will be removed. It will be removed and it will be given to the next layer. That means it will be given to the uh, network layer. So now you can see it is defines frames. So frame is a protocol data unit available here. So you are going to send and receive the frames here. So in the data link layer, you are sending the frame, you are receiving the frame. Then if you take the sender machine, okay, these are the steps in the sender machine and these are the steps available in the receiver machine. Okay, what is the sender machine means? You are accepting the message from the higher layer, layer. That means from the layer three, you are accepting the message and you break them into the frames. You are converting into the frames and hand these frames to the physical layer. Actually, one more thing you can add it here. You are going to add a header here. A header will be added with that and with, okay, that is called the frame. The frame will be now you are going to give it to the physical layer. Okay, so receiving the message from the top layer, that means from the higher layer, you are going to convert into frame, then you will be adding some headers with that, okay, and it will be given to the next layer, physical layer. The same, if you go for the receiver machine, in the receiver machine, you are going to receive the frames from the physical layer. From the physical layer, we are receiving the frame, then you are going to assemble into the message, that means you will remove the header, okay, the header will be removed then you can give the message to the next player. Okay, it will be given to the next player. So a header will be added here. Okay, that is called the layer two header. So what available in the header, we can see it in the uh, other lectures. Okay, we are not going to discuss here. Okay, so if you want, just make it very simple thing, MAC address. There is something called MAC address will be available. So the MAC address will be added in the header. Okay, MAC address will be added. So this is about the data link layer.
Now, the data link layer, if you take, it's going to do detect or correct the errors. So these are all some of the important functions other than uh, adding the header, converting into frames, okay, other than this. So data link layer is going to do some important task. So what, what exactly that is means? The first one, it is detects or corrects the errors to ensure the frames to error free messages. It is going to check the errors, detecting the errors and correcting the errors. So there are two different concepts available for error correction. One is Hamming code method and second one is a C or C, cyclic redundancy check. So by using these two methods, you can check the errors, okay, C or C, cyclic redundancy check or Hamming code. So by using these methods, you can detect and you can find the errors available in the data. Then the data link layer is going to do the flow control also. So what exactly the flow control means? Uh, managing the speed difference between two nodes, so two computers, okay. So one computer will be very fast, the another one, one will be slow. So to manage the speed difference, okay, that is called the flow control concept. So the flow control concept is available, okay, that means the data link layer is doing the uh, flow control also. Then the next is the error control. So error control only we already discussed here. So it's going to deal with the damaged, lost and duplicated, we are using the word frames. So it's going to detect, okay, the damaged frames, the lost frames, duplicate frames. So all these things will be controlled, okay, that is called the error control operation. So the data link layer, detecting the errors, correcting the errors, it's doing the flow control and doing the error control. Now, so out of all the seven layers, so we have the seven layers in OSA model, out of all the seven layers, the data link layer is a only layer which is having two sub layers, okay, two sub layers. The first one it is called the MAC, medium access control and logical link control. So these are the two sub layers available in the data link layer. So it's a very important multiple choice question, okay. So out of all the seven layers, only data link layer is the layer which is having the sub layers. We can divide it into two data link layer. So the first one is the MAC, MAC medium access control and second sub layer is the logical link control. Now, I am moving to the next layer. So, the next layer is the network layer. So, layer 3, the same thing you can see. So, this is a sender machine and this is the receiver machine. So, in the sender machine, so we are receiving something from the transport layer, okay. That means we are receiving the segments. So, the segments will be received from the transport layer. So, with that segments, you are going to add a header. So, this is called encapsulation. So, in the layer 3, the layer 3 header will be added. So, what is exactly available in this header means nothing, it is IP address. So, the IP address will be available. Now, so in this layer, IP address, okay, that means the source IP address, destination IP address will be added. Then it will be converted, okay, now it is called the packet. Okay, because the PDU is the packet, now it will become packet, then it will be given to the data link layer. If you go for the receiver machine, in the receiver machine you can see, we are going to receive the frame, okay, we are going to receive the frame from the data link layer. So, it is okay, it is sorry, we are going to receive the packet, okay, from the uh, data link layer. So, now I am going to remove the header, the header part will be removed, okay. Now I am having the packet with me. I am receiving it from the data link layer. So, I am going to remove the header and I will give it to the next layer, okay, to the transport layer. So, what exactly this is means? So, here encapsulation will be done, that means the header will be added, but here the header will be removed, okay. So, here we are going to do the decapsulation process. So, other than this, the network layer is going to be a very important layer, okay. So, it is going to do lot of things, lot of other things also it is going on in the network layer. So, what are they? We can see it here. Network layers are responsible for the delivery of individual packets, okay. It is going to deliver individual packets from a source to the destination. And also the very important function of the network layer is defining, determine the route, the route of a packet. That means the path, how the packet should move in a network, in the public network. So that is going to be the route, it is going to fix the route, determine the route, okay. About this we are going to see, okay, separate lecture, routing. There is, I think, lecture number 9 or 10, we are going to discuss about the complete uh, routing concept, okay. So how to find your path from your network to the another network in internet, so in a public network. 
so this router that sorry this layer is going to do uh, finding the routes or it is going to uh, do routing okay then send the message hop by hop to the destination okay for example you are in this network this is the uh, your network and you want to communicate with the other network so in between you will be having so many other networks or we can say the routers okay so from here to here i want to send the packet from the source to the destination i want to send the packet so this is the source and this is the destination now so the routing protocol okay or we can say the layer 3 it is going to find the path so this is hop by hop so from this router to this router you have to jump so your packet should move from this router to this router this is called the hop by hop hop by hop means from router to router you have to jump and finally your packet will reach the destination so this routes will be fixed by the network layer. Then the network layer is going to do control of congestion, okay, congestion control in the network. And also it is going to manage the billing information. So how many packets you sent, how many packets you received, okay. So this is the billing, the billing information, okay. It's calculating how much of data you consume. So all the billing information will be done in the layer 3 and address mapping. So address mapping means, so converting the public IP address into private IP address, private IP address to public IP address, okay. So this is also you will learn, uh, you will not learn in this course. That means in data communication, you will not learn about this. In the next lecture, that means the next course, okay, introduction to routing and switching, you will learn about this. Then interconnection of heterogeneous networks. So different types of networks you can connect by using the network layer. So network layer is going to play a major role here. Okay, it's going to count the, that means the billing information, congestion control, address mapping, defining the route. So all these things are the major task of the network layer. Okay, so in simple, very just in a simple way, I can tell uh, plenty of routing protocols. Okay, lot of routing protocols will be available in the network layer. So about these routing protocols, we will study in the coming courses. Now, the next layer is layer four is a transport layer. So in the transport layer, so the transport layer, you can see receiving the data from the session layer. This is the source machine and this is the destination machine. So the source machine, it is receiving the data from the session layer. So with this, okay, that means we are converting into segments, okay. The PDU of layer four is segments. So we are converting into segments. So with each segment, you are going to add a header, okay. A header will be added. So this is called the encapsulation process. So encapsulation means adding something with your data. You are going to add a header. Okay. So here with every data, you are going to add a header. This is called the encapsulation process. What is available inside this header means, so generally you will be having port numbers. Okay. Port numbers will be added. Okay. Source port number and destination port numbers. So port numbers will be added with this particular, okay, data then it will be given to the network layer. So this is a source machine. You can see in the destination machine, in the destination machine, the header will be removed. Okay, we must remove the headers and we have to give the data to the session layer. So here encapsulation will be going on and here the decapsulation is going on. Okay, other than this, what are the other things? Okay, what are the other important things? Okay, yeah, transport layer is going to do means. So transport layer is responsible for delivering of message Okay, delivery of the message to the delivery from one process to the another process to the another. So it is it's responsible for delivering the message. Okay, so transport layer is going to play a very major role in the delivery of messages from one computer to another computer. Then it accepts the data from the session layer. Yes, it's coming from the session layer and it is going to split into the smaller units. So we are having the data. Okay, the data is coming from the session layer. So we are going to convert into segments, okay. So the size of the data is more means you can convert into small, small pieces. We are going to convert into segments. So every segment will be added with a header, okay. Every segment will be added with a header. So this is what we discussed here. Then, so smaller units if needed and pass the information to the network layer. Then ensure the pieces all arrives correctly. So we are going to make sure that all the pieces, so I divided into one, two, three, four, five. So all the five pieces arrives correctly at the receiver and reassembling them into the original order. So 
we are going to divide into segments that is one of the important function of transport layer then we have to ensure that all the pieces reach the destination so the transport layer is going to make sure the transport layer is going to ensure that all the pieces reach the destination correctly then here everything will be assembled reassembled okay reassembled into the original order and finally you can say flow control so the flow control is available in transport layer also so the flow control i already explained what is flow control so it's managing the speed difference between the source and destination between two computers we can say okay between two computers you are going to manage the speed difference so this is about the flow control so these are the important tasks that transport layer is doing you can see in the next layer also the next slide also so it is going to do the connection management the two important protocols here if you take a transport layer the two important protocols which are running here is the tcp protocol and udp protocol okay so two important protocols the first protocol is a tcp protocol and the second protocol is a udp okay transmission control protocol user datagram protocol so these are the two important protocols which are running in this layers so tcp it is a connection oriented protocol so what is that we will see it later so here, here the, the concept of this lecture is we need to cover all the layers okay i'm not going to explain the individual protocols so tcp layer sorry tcp protocol udp protocol two important protocols so tcp protocol we can say it is a connection oriented protocol and the udp is connection less protocol so these two protocols you can use it okay in the in this layer so this is used to establish and delete the connections so you can create a connection from one machine to another machine and you can delete the connection then you can have multiple connections also so from one computer okay from a single source to many destinations okay only one source will be available so many destinations you can have so for multiple connections also you can create with your source okay for example this is one source computer means you can connect the source computer with multiple destinations okay multiple destinations d1 d2 d3 d4 so this is multiple connection so multiple connections you can maintain by using the transport layer and may multiplex several transport connections into onto the same network connections so many people are communicating with you okay the destination this person is communicating one two three four persons communicating with your machine at the same time means so all these things will be managed by the transport layer so we are going to study one lecture for multiplexing concept what exactly multiplexing demultiplexing we are going to discuss one lecture so one to many many to one so these types of communications or connections it will be uh, managed by the transport layer then so it is this layer it is called the end to end layer so at this layer the program on the source machines carries a conversation with a similar program on the destination machine so this is going to be a very core okay we can say it is a heart the heart of the transport layer so here from this layer only the, the the real conversation is going on okay so a program in one machine it's going to communicate it's going to have conversation with the with the program which is on the another machine okay you can see here so through the transport layer only we are going to have the real conversation the two machines are going to have the real conversation only by using this in this layer okay so there is another concept available called sockets okay sockets and all you will learn about the sockets and all in the uh, other courses so this is going to be a very important layer so we can say it is a heart of the tcp the osa model so here only in the transport layer only the exact conversation is going on between two different machines so end to end communication okay end to end communications will be going on only in this particular layer now you can see the uh, transport layer lower three layers define how the network operates transport layer is the first to define end to end communication so using this only all types of communication is carried on so does not involve any intermediate nodes okay see network layer data link layer physical layer you will be having some intermediate nodes so this is the source computer and this is the destination computer so in between we are having some other computers okay you can say this is a router device okay or you can take some other machine so your packet will be going to the destination it is not directly going to the destination so in between there are some machines available so your packet will travel like this okay the packet will travel like this so then only it will reach so now 
up to the network layer you are transmitting intermediate machines up to the network layer you are going to go then you will go to the next machine up to the network layer then you will go to the next machine so that means the packet the movement of packet will be like this but the transport layer is the first to define end to end communication okay now you can see in the intermediate machines we are using we are not using the transport layer so directly the transport layer is connected so this is end to end communication okay so the first to define the end to end communication is the transport layer then the session layer to session layer presentation to presentation then the application to application but if you take the last three layers so you will travel through the intermediate so there is no end to end in between there will be available there will be something available here so does not involve intermediate nodes so the transport layer it is going to define a direct end to end communication between the source and destination does not involve any intermediate nodes so this is about the transport layer other than this the transport layer is going to use or it is going to do the flow control so we know what is the flow control and it is going to do the error detection also finding the errors in the segments okay then response to the user request so the user can give a uh, request and automatically it will give a request to the users okay so that's why we used to say it is end to end now there are two different types of transport services we can do so already i explained this to you one is a connection oriented and next one is a connection less so connection oriented means so it it could be the tcp protocol so you can use a tcp protocol so in connection less means it is a udp protocol so there are two different types of service one is a connection oriented service and second one is a connection less service okay so these are the two different services uh, done by the provided by the transport layer the transport layer is receiving the pdu from the above layer that means from the session layer the pdu is coming so this is the transport layer payload okay that means the data now the data will be converted into segments so we are converting into the segments so i am taking one segment here so this segment i am going to say transport layer pd now with the segment the transport layer is going to add a header so this is the header it is going to add now the whole thing the header plus the pdu okay that means the segment so this will be given to the next layer so the next layer is the network layer now the network layer is going to add a header with that then the entire thing will be given to the next layer the next layer is the data link layer the data link layer is going to add a header so you can see this is a frame header this is layer 2 and this is the packet header layer 3 and this is the transport layer header this is layer 4 so every layer is adding okay so every layer is adding a header okay so this is layer 2 this is layer 3 and this is layer 4 so in layer 4 we are going to say it is a pack sorry segment in layer 3 we are going to say as a packet in layer 2 we are going to say it as a frames okay so this is how the things are happening in the every layer now the next one the very important thing transport layer is going to provide a very important thing it provides the quality of service so there are so many parameters quality of service parameters you can see the throughput transit delay error ratio so i'm not going to explain these terms here okay uh, in coming lectures we are going to discuss about this throughput transit delay error ratio everything so throughput transit delay and error ratio these are the three important parameters which are used to measure the quality of a network okay you can measure only only this much if you understand it is enough in this uh, lecture so i repeat throughput transit delay and error ratio okay you can see the words so error so the number of errors should be less transit delay should be less and throughput should be more so the three things which can improve the okay you can measure your networks quality by using these three different terms then user specify preferred acceptable and minimum so that means the preferred throughput preferred transit delay and error ratio preferred error so same thing acceptable throughput acceptable transmit delay and acceptable error ratio i'll just talk about only this transmission delay now so transmission delay means it is related about the time that means uh, from a sender to a receiver so you are sending a packet 
So what is the time taken? T. So the time taken for a particular packet to reach from the source to the destination. So if T equal, if T is less, then we can say your network is good. If T, the transmission delay, the transmission time is more, means we can say the network is slow. So this is about the, uh, the parameters. There are different parameters available. So some parameters for connection less transport and some parameters for the connection oriented transport will be used. So transport layer determines all these values. So the transport layer is going to be, as I already told, it is going to be the heart, the heart of the uh, OSA model. So it's going to take care of the end-to-end -end communication. It is improving the quality of service. So everything will be maintained by the transport layer. We are moving on to the next layer, layer 5. So which is the session layer. So session layer is responsible for dialogue control and synchronization. So this is the two major responsibility of session layer. So the first responsibility is the dialogue control and second one is the synchronization. Then this layer is going to allow the applications, so the applications which are running on the source and the destinations on two different computers to establish a session or a logical connection. So this is going to allow the applications to have to establish a session between them or a logical connection between the two applications. Then session layer may coordinate the process by determining each when each is to send or to listen. So when a machine is going to send the data or when a machine is going to listen to a data. So this should be synchronized. So when a machine is sending the data, the other machine should listen to receive it. Okay. So this should be synchronized. Okay, if both the machines are sending the data at the same time means, okay, the data will be dropped. If the, both the machines are going to be in the listening state, means, okay, no, no data transmission is going to take place. So one machine is going to send the data, the other machine is going to receive the data. So this should be synchronized. So when a machine is going to send the data and when a machine is going to listen. So this synchronization can be controlled by the session layer. And also, if there is any error available, session errors, okay, if there is any error happen means, so this errors will be recovered. So it's going to manage the session uh, errors also. Then brackets are operations that must appear to the user as a single transmission transaction. So it will look like a single transaction. It is used in some applications such as the remote login, remote file transfer. So all these things will be managed by the session layer. So generally here the very important two things is it is going to manage the dialogue control between the two machines and it is going to synchronize the operations between two different machines. So this is about the session layer. Now presentation layer. So the presentation layer is responsible for presenting the data in a particular format. So the data we are going to receive from the application layer. So the whatever the data comes from the application layer. So you how to, that means the presentation layer is going to convert or it is going to present the data in a format, okay, its user can understand. So it's going to hide, hides the character encoding differences, translating the data formats such as the ABCD and ASCII. So these are the two, form, two popular uh, formats that means for converting the text we are using. And it is providing the security services also. That means you can encrypt the data, data encryption, decryption, compression, Okay, so all these things is going on in the presentation layer. Concerned with the syntax and the semantics of the informed transmitter. So we are, both the machines are going to follow the same types of syntax and semantics. Okay, so for presenting the data, both the sender machine and the receiver machine is going to use or it's going to follow the same syntax and semantics. So that means the same format it is going to use. So moving on to the layer 7, application layer. The application layer is responsible for providing the service to the users. So this is the layer where exactly the data will be created. Okay. So communicates with the user or a program, an application program. So the user will be available in the laser in this layer or the application programs will be available in this layer. So you, the user is going to create the data or by using the application programs, the user can create a data, not the same as the application program. So here, 
it is exactly where the user is going to communicate where the user is going to interact okay this is that layer so it provides the services and protocol there are different types of services running here there are huge number of protocols layer 7 protocols if you take there are plenty of protocols available okay for example email file transfer virtual terminal there are a lot of protocols available in layer 7 so we are going to see in the coming slides what are the protocols in each layer layer 7 protocols layer 6 protocols we are going to discuss in the coming slides now i'm going for the summary so the overall you can see the application layer so this provides programs with access to the network services and the pdu here is the data so this is the place where the user is going to interact this is the place where all your programs and applications will be available okay layer 7 so the presentation date layer it is going to handle the data representation data representation to the application data and data conversations it is going to ensure the data is readable by the receiving system and also it is going to handle the encryption and decryption the security related things and also data compression also it is going to do and this layer the pdu of this layer is the data Session layer, it is going to establish, maintain and coordinate communication between the applications. So it is going to coordinate, okay, the synchronization, dialogue control. And the PDU in this layer is the data. So transport layer, it is going to ensure the end-to-end -end connection. That means ensure the end, the reliable, the reliable data delivery of the data. So it's break down the data into segments handling the sequence numbers and acknowledgements this we have not covered in the previous slides so this is a very important point so it's going to handle some something called sequencing that means sequencing number will be available for every uh, unit of data you are going to have a sequence numbers sequencing and acknowledgements also available so what is an acknowledgement means if you send a data so you must receive an acknowledgement so if there is no acknowledgement then retransmission will be done so acknowledgement is going to be done here in this layer and also it is going to provide the flow control so flow control we already discussed about the flow control managing the speed difference between the two machines now the pdu here it is a segment segment is the pdu so move on to the next layer network layer network layer is going to handle the routing so the very important concept going on here is a packet routing and also it is a logical addressing logical addressing means the ip address so it's going to provide ip address okay to the packets it's inserting the source ip address and destination ip address in the header then you can have the access control here so access control it is a security point of view so you can create access control in these layers so you if you want to allow a particular packet you can uh, allow it if you want to uh, stop if you want to block a particular packet you can block so access control you can do it in this particular layer so your router is a network layer device so if you take a device a router router is a device a hardware device so this device is working in network layer and the pdu here in this layer the pdu protocol data unit is packet so data link layer it is going to handle the physical device addressing that means the mac address so here the mac address will be added okay into the frames and this layer is responsible for device to device delivery okay so device to device delivery so this layer is responsible and here we are going to have the frames and this layer is having the two layers two sub layers one is the llc and second one is the mac and what is the pdu we are going to handle here means the pdu we are going to handle here is the frames so frames is the PDU. physical layer so this is the completely a hardware connection that means the cable so all your transmission media is going to be available in this layer and this layer you are going to send and receive the binary signals zeros and ones we are going to send and receive and here we are going to do the encoding so the next lecture we are going to discuss about the signals so encoding means converting from one form to another form from binary to analog analog to binary okay that means the digital analog to digital digital to binary sorry analog to digital digital to analog okay this is then the components including here is a network media network media means the cables and different types of connectors will be used and these are the two very popular devices which is used in the layer one one is the hub and second one is the repeaters okay in lecture number eight we are going to talk about these devices okay what are the networking devices repeaters and hubs so repeater and hub is used in the physical layer 
switch switch is a very popular device which is used in the data link layer and routers so router is a very popular device we used in the network layer okay in layer 3 so some layers are in some devices so network layer router data link layer switches and physical layer we have the repeaters and hops so with this yeah we have one more slide so you can see the protocols here so in every layer which protocol okay the protocol used in the layers this is a very important thing so if you take the application layer so we are having the http protocol ftp protocol smtp and telnet so these are all the popular protocols which are running in the layer 7 so in layer 6 that means in the presentation layer okay jpeg and mp3 so in the session layer we have the sap and rpp protocol in layer 4 tcp and udp layer 3 ip protocol layer 2 hdlc frame relay and atm and layer 1 modem and v.35 so these are all the different uh, protocols which are running in each and every layer so we already discussed about the functions okay in the previous layer the previous slide you can see user access network process network process the application data representation encryption decryption this is a summary so inter host communication managing the multiple connections and maintain synchronization session layer transport layer reliable and flow control end to end delivery layer 3 logical addressing used by the routers and the host layer 2 mac address and error detection layer 1 it is going to be specify the voltage media binary transmission okay so these are all yeah, the function that means the summary the overall summary of all the seven layers so with this we are completing the first one that is a uh, osa model now i'm going for the tcp model so the second model tcp model so this is going to be very simple and easy if you understand the osa model so the almost same thing here but here what we are going to do means some layers we are going to merge okay we are going to merge together and we are going to have so now you can see here tcp ip protocol should it is developed very to the osa model tcp transfer transmission control protocol internet protocol tcp ip so this is a protocol shoot it is a collection of protocol set of protocols available organized in different layers it is designed and developed by us department of defense and it is based on the standard protocol so it's based on a standard protocol it contains four layers unlike seven layers in the osa model so in the osa model we have seven layers but whereas here in the tcp we are going to have only four layers so now you can see a comparison between the tcp ip and osa so in osa seven layers so the first three layers that means the application layer presentation layer and the session layer so these three layers we are going to merge together and we are going to convert into a single layer which is the application layer so transport layer i'm going to take the transport layer as it is network layer we are going to say it is an inter network layer here and the last two layers that means the data link layer and physical layer we are merging together and we are going to call network interface layer so totally there are only four layers application layer transport layer inter network layer and network interface layer so these are the four layers available in the tcp ip model so we no need to study it again so almost whatever the points you already covered in the tc in the osa model the same thing is going to you are going okay we are going to uh, study here now i'm going for the, uh, the the other diagram so you can see application presentation session okay we are merging together so all the application layer protocols presentation layer protocols session layer protocols so all these things i'm going to merge here so everything we are going to merge together as a single layer so transport layer the very popular protocol is the tcp protocol and udp protocol so we are having the transport layer separate so this is the transport layer so the network layer we are going to say as the inter network layer here so inter network layer these are all the protocol icmp protocol igmp protocol ip protocol erp protocol and the reverse ERP protocol. So these are all the protocols used in the network layer. The last two layers we are merging together. One is the data link and physical and all the protocols from the data link and physical we are going to combine together. So this is the TCP IP model which is having only four layers. So this is layer four, this is layer three and this is layer two and here it is layer one. Okay. So this is TCP IP model. Now 
so we are going to take application layer so application layer we already know so you can take application presentation session all the three layers you can take it from the osi and you can write it here okay so this is equivalent to the osi application presentation and session layers so here what are the major functions means the major functions is data formatting data translation data encryption session establishment and control services so these are all okay we are going to take it from the first three layers of osi okay layer 6 layer 7 and layer 5 so you are merging everything and you are going to write it and these are all the protocols all the protocols we are going to combine all the three layers protocol so ftp http dhcp uh, smtp snmp dns okay file transfer protocol hypertext transfer protocol dynamic host configuration protocol simple mail transfer protocol simple network management protocol and domain name system so these are all the protocols which is available in the layer uh, 4 okay that is the application layer of tcp ip model now i'm going for the transport mail layer it's almost the same thing whatever we uh, covered okay we read that so the same thing so it is equivalent to the osi transport layer so data transportation data sequencing flow control and error checking so the two different protocols here one is a connection oriented protocol the another one is a connection list protocol connection oriented protocol is a tcp protocol connection list is the user you use a datagram protocol that means the udp layer 2 so we are going to say it is an inter network layer here so this is equivalent to the osi network layer so here network addressing and data routing these are the two major functions going on here network addressing and data routing so in this protocol so you are going to have ip okay ip protocol that means ipv4 and ipv6 okay ipv4 and ipv6 we can have so these are the other protocols we are having icmp internet control protocol intercon sorry internet control message protocol so what is this protocol means what is the use of this protocol means this is to trace the messages and handling the errors okay we use the command ping command so the very popular command to test the connectivity so the ping command is a part of icmp okay it's a part of icmp protocol so all the errors in your network okay it will be informed by the icmp protocol next one is igmp internet group management protocol so this protocol is going to deal with the multicast groups so you can create a group of routers okay group of computers so groups you can create by using the igmp internet group management protocol okay so this is report the group memberships and last one is a erp protocol address res resolution protocol by using this protocol you can provide the address resolution so what is this address resolution means uh, by using the ip address you are having the ip address of your machine you want to find what is the mac address of the machine so you can find the mac address of your machine by using the ip address so this is going to be the uh, erp protocol the function of erp okay so this also we are going to cover in some other lecture in this course so we are going to map the ip address to mac address mac to ip address also you can map so that is going to be the reverse okay reverse erp so in a simple way just in a simple word i will say using the ip address you can find the mac address okay that is a erp the erp protocol will be used using the mac address you can find the ip address so that is a reverse erp okay reverse erp protocol so these are the protocols used in the layer 2 so layer 1 it is a network layer so in this layer so we are having all the transmission media okay all the transmission media and also we are going to handle okay this is a combination of two layers that means the data link layer plus physical layer so whatever you have done in the data link layer the osi plus the physical layer you can merge together and you can write it here so mac media access control that means the mac address okay media access control is a different thing this is one of the sub layer okay there are two sub layers available okay mac that means media access control and the llc logical link control so these two layers will be available here and you are going to have all the transmission media here complete the transmission media will be available data encoding decoding signal transmission everything will be done in this layer so in this lecture we discussed two different models network models so one is the osi model and second one is the tcp ip model so if you completely thoroughly understand the osi model tcp ip model is going to be very simple 
okay it's going to be very easy because whatever you study in the OSC model only you are going to write it here okay so with this we are completing lecture number two